You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. All right, so your ornamental grasses in autumn should be spectacular. And if they are not showing those plumes, so so grasses don't have a flower, they got a plume that comes up. That's the most famous would be pampas grass, this humongous grass is way bigger than I am, and the plumes hover above that. It's too big for a lot of yards, but it sure is spectacular out there by the driveway, by the street, privacies, blocking the hot tub, out in the corners of that block wall. That's where you plant a really big shrub like that. Well, that should be showing some white plumes right now. If it's not, there's an insider tip to getting those to bloom. Now, the smaller grasses, let's say coral forester, bunny grass, fescues, uh, zebra grass, all these, let's say hip high and smaller grasses, ornamental grasses. We're not talking lawn. We're not, you're not going to cut it with a mower. Don't even need a mower for ornamental grasses. In the mountains of Arizona, we're famous for our grasses. This is where they grow. Our native ones are deer grass, mesocanthus, bear grass. So like rawr, bears, they're, they're growing out in the valley areas and, and the wind will blow through those and they just add drama. They add magic. They add, they look good in containers. They just, there's something about to this altitude that they just really admire. They, they, they show off. What grasses need though, they're high feeders. They're much like a fruit tree or a rose. They need a lot of energy to produce all of that new growth and the new flowers every single year. And so you're going to probably cut those grasses back every winter. So after January to March, you cut them right back to the ground, including pampas grass, uh, that, and, and then they form all new growth every year. And then this time of year, above that growth will be the plumes. And so there's this, this a high energy plant to pull that off every year. That's, it takes a lot for that plant to produce that much growth in one year. So my coral forester grass, that's one of my favorites. It's a, it's a nice green grass that's up about knee high. And then it has this white uh, flower to it that hovers the, uh, all, all season long, really. I, the reason I like it is it blooms so early. And so it starts blooming in May. Whereas most ornamental grasses or showy grasses, they're not going to start until about now through the end of the year. And so I like that one. It's, it's, it's cute. It's small enough to fit anywhere in the gardens. And it just has a long bloom cycle and a long green cycle. So it stays hibernated underground like a true perennial, maybe for two, three months. And then it's right back. I mean, it is growing quickly. I have one, a, a, a red bunny grass. This is a shorter grass, again, about knee high, maybe a little shorter than knee high. And it's starting to have the red flowers or red plumes coming up. It started maybe three weeks ago, and now it's just, it's it'll have hundreds, hundreds of plumes coming up here very shortly. And it will keep those through the end of the year. It's a magical plant. And so you just need to feed those things, fertilize them more. And the way you do that is it, they really like the 744 all-purpose plant food. The reason is it's got cottonseed meal. That's what forms the plume, it lowers the pH, it brings a green out, but mainly it has a lot of bird guano, bird poop in it. And so grass loves, I mean, lawns, any kind of grass loves bird poop. So it's just a fast released, high energy nitrogen source. And so grasses like nitrogen. Remember, phosphor, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. That first number is green growth. That's mainly what grasses need. But in addition, I find they benefit from a handful of superphosphate. So I was just adding so superphosphate, 0, 18, 0. I just uh, put a bunch of superphosphate with my all my ornamental grasses. I've got quite a few. In, in containers and raised beds out in the yard. Just sprinkle some of this around and it will encourage more plumes to come up. They're using that right now. 
I mean, I can't emphasize this enough. If if your pampas grass has been thin, wispy, just hasn't been, they haven't looked like the rest of the neighbors, that is the reason. Come in, get a handful, very inexpensive, super phosphate, throw a few handfuls on there, and it will be a game changer this next this next fall, like the season that's happening right now. This is something you do in the yard this week that makes a difference for the rest of the year. It's kind of a game changer. And so grasses are high energy, high food, high showy. They're, they're showstoppers. And so it takes a little bit of energy on the gardener's part to have really showy. It'll do it by itself. But it can be so much more with just a little bit of energy from you will make it a, a game changer. So food, uh, keep it keep it watered. Don't 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 rely on the monsoons. Keep it on that regular cycle. You'll put your shrubs on. That's what a grass likes. Okay, and that's how to get grasses to look more spectacular. Get them to bloom in your yard. Be right back after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more. Or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.